Rectory, a rectory was built here, and just about every strange phenomena have been reported over the years. So, Peter Underwood, you are president of the Ghost Club in England, which makes you one of the leading ghost hunters. And here we are at Borley Rectory, one of the most haunted houses in the country. Is that right? Well, yes, but uh, we're not actually at, at Borley Rectory because Borley Rectory stood over there and is no longer there. But the, I'm quite convinced beyond any shadow of doubt that the house that stood just across the road was fully lived up to its name as the most haunted house in England. Why, why are you convinced? The, accumulation of evidence over the years is absolutely shattering. It all began with the legend and of course the most familiar aspect of the haunting is a ghost nun which has been seen for something like, well, nearly a hundred years. One of the rectors even bricked up one of the windows because he said the phantom nun looked in at him having his breakfast. But over the years, phantom figures have been seen, footsteps have been heard, solid heavy footsteps on floorboards, messages have been scribbled on the walls and on pieces of paper apparently from a French nun asking for light mass and prayers bones have been found two skulls have been found one was buried in the churchyard the other were they identified as women or female or one of them was identified as a young female and it's rather interesting because a dental surgeon discovered that there was a deep-seated abscess in the jawbone and nearly all the people who have reported seeing the nun, have said that she appeared sad-faced, unhappy. And, of course, with the deep-seated action, she would indeed. So, really, we're sad. talking about a, 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 the ghosts of a, a nun with toothache. That's what it sounds like, yes, yes. But putting all that on one side, the fact remains, you've got the incumbences of four rectors from 1892, uh, from 1863, rather, until 1935. Four rectors, their families, wives, many friends and relatives, all of whom assert that they heard, saw and felt things which they can't explain. And I think the accumulated evidence is absolutely overwhelming that this was indeed the most haunted house in England. It was in 1937 that when the Smiths were here, uh, Smith had recently come to England from in India and he just walked into this and he wondered what was happening. Uh, he saw a figure, he saw a phantom coach, his lights suddenly blared up, bells rang. He didn't know what to do, and he wrote to a, the national paper, and they sent down Harry Price, who was the leading psychic investigator at that time. And, of course, he was fascinated once he heard the story and started making inquiries. Uh, the ecclesiastical authorities decided that the house was no longer suitable for a rector to live in, and Price decided to rent it. And he rented the place for a year, arranged independent investigators, who again reported identical phenomena, footsteps, lights, noises, bell ringing, and so on. Uh, and then the place was sold privately to a Cracton Grigson, and while he owned it, a somewhat mysterious fire took place and the place was gutted. But the interesting thing is that once the rectory was destroyed mm. and there was no building on the site, then the entities apparently transferred their activities to the church, where visiting rectors have seen figures, have heard noises. Many visitors have reported footsteps following them up the church path inside the uh, church itself.